I'm going to tell you. I can't remember, honestly, the last time I had this much fun watching WrestleMania. I can't. I thought night two was going to have a heck of a time living up to night one. And man, night two lived up to it. Might have even exceeded it. Now, maybe some of this is me getting caught up in the moment of the WWE having set for me such low expectations for the show that if they managed to exceed him at all or exceed him a little, the show was going to feel a lot better than it was. But I don't think that's the case here. Could be, but I don't think it is. I legitimately enjoyed this show this year. It almost feels kind of funny saying that. Now, what did it do for the long-term outlook for WWE? Pfft, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't know particularly at this moment that I think care that much. But... Night two got off to a better start than night one instantly because there he is, our Lord and Savior, as you pray to some invisible thing that you don't even know is real, that allows all these terrible things to happen in the world. I and others like me choose to believe in the one true God, the one that held Sunday service in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania. Helmsley, 1.38, a reading from the book of God. And he saith, he soever who is God shall get eternal yearly WrestleMania paydays. Yeah! And you believe all these narratives by this mass media about the boots signifying his retirement. He's God. He doesn't retire. He's there. He's everywhere. It's just a, a political play. He sees all these other young lions getting opportunities and he says, I want to get my slice of the pie. It's brilliant. But it was a good moment. Good way to start off the show. And it followed it up with a freaking better opening match. Like, even from the beginning... You know, the chick was at Decker. Like, she was so much better night two singing America Beautiful than the Brantley dude was singing night one. He got God to kick it off on Sunday. It's his day. And then the Raw Tag Team Championship match. This is a fire start. Like, this was a really good match. And the back-to-back -back RKO spots to finish it were amazing. Like, couldn't have asked for much more. They are really pushing this Gable Steveson dude. Like, this is almost getting obnoxious already. Like, to make it a point to introduce him both night one and night two. But you know what? You need to create young stars. Well, here you fucking go. You're at least throwing your weight behind him. I'll give him that. What are you going to do with it once it becomes that opportunity? But they are pushing the hell out of this dude. Amos versus Bobby Lashley. Kind of sad to me, similar to Drew McIntyre. Where Drew on night one was working the second match on the card. In a storyline he really didn't care about? For a match he really didn't care about? Similar thing here for Bobby Lashley. This is a guy that was world champion, main eventer, and now he's in this spot? Eh. He almost is a long way away from being a viable big-time player in WWE. It was what it was, but at least it was short. Lashley wins, so it's all good. And frankly... It really didn't matter because we got to what ultimately was the second, technically the second longest match of the card, was Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville in this Anything Goes match. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fan-freaking-tastic. Some of the same people that are going to shit on this match are the same ones that like the dick spots in matches, so they can shut the fuck up. This was incredible. Why the hell we had to wait until 2022 for Johnny Knoxville to have a WrestleMania match, I'll never fucking know. Because he should have had some over the years if this is what was going to be the result. We got Party Boy. We got fucking Wee Man. Like, Wee Man was a moment. And when he body slammed Sami Zayn, holy shit. May Young and Mark Henry's hand making a WrestleMania debut against Sami Zayn's face. <laughs> And those that are surely going to complain because Sami Zayn lost this. Fuck you. Sami Zayn made this work, man. 
This was fantastic. Were you not sports entertained? And if anything, this should drive the respect level for a Sami Zayn up because he understood the importance of doing business here. And by God, did he do business. This was a lot of damn fun. And as much as the bar was set high by Logan Paul on night one for in terms of the celebrity involvement here, night two, Knoxville in his own special way, he fucking delivered the goods too. This was great. Like even at the end when you had the big ass mouse trap and it kind of botched and he was able to figure it out pretty quickly on the fly. Like that's some good shit. This match was amazing. I was laughing the whole damn time. I popped. And if you really honestly think about it, talk about the Sami Zayn factor of this. As much as anything, you could say this was a showcase spotlight weekend for Kevin Steen and El Generico. If you really think about it, this is the highlight of their WWE runs, talking about both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. This is the highlight. And you think this is a bad highlight for them? You're a clown. This match was fantastic. Now, how repeatable is this? How sustainable is this to have to rely on so many celebrities and guests to do matches at WrestleMania? I don't know. And at this particular moment, yeah, I don't effing care. We'll worry about that down the line. Uh, the Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way match. The best thing I could say is Sasha finally gets a WrestleMania win. Sasha and Naomi standing tall at the end is all I really care about. Honestly, like... The match was just a formality to get to what I was hoping the result was going to be. And that's what the result was. So I'm good with it. Um, not everyone has to be a banger or go an incredibly long time. And at least I'll say this for night two. The one thing it had over night one is it felt like time management was a little better. Or at least I could say this. The matches weren't as long. Now, the longest match of the entire weekend was Edge versus AJ Styles. And I was really looking forward to this match. Like, really looking forward to it. You know, obviously you had our Tribal Chief and Brock Lesnar in the main event. It was always going to be match one. But this was probably match two for me. Because my thought was, this is going to be the type of mid-card WrestleMania match that every great WrestleMania show needs. And for me, it mostly delivered. Mostly delivered. Now, it was a little slow moving, but for me, that's okay. I'm old, and I like storytelling. Some of you don't, so this match probably didn't connect with you as much. You think you like storytelling, but really, you just tell yourself that when you really like a bunch of easy gratification spots. Um, but from Edge's intro, it was freaking badass. Did AJ get cut by the pyro and then have to pop his own shoulder back into socket? The match was really good storytelling, though. And the way they had Damian Priest come out, he didn't actually interfere. He just kind of stood there. I liked it. It worked for me. Edge wins. He needed this win at Mania. And they did it in a way that doesn't hurt AJ Styles. And now, obviously, you've got Damian Priest aligned with Edge. And now you're sitting there and saying, man, Edge is a fucking badass because it seems like everything he does is interesting. And now you've got this character change later in his career that could potentially help elevate others. I am all effing down for that. So yeah, this was fine. It was really, really good. It wasn't my favorite match of the weekend. One of the best match of the weekend, but it was really good. And for all of us that were complaining about the New Day and Sheamus and Rich Holland getting their match cut, you know, maybe it should have stayed cut. To me, it's funny how the freaking loser weight Reminds me of one of the Newsies. <laughs> oh, God. But New Day gets their Mania match. And and this this is how they do it for their dude, Big E. Man, maybe they're not such good friends after all. Did, they, did, you, did you really want this match? Ooh. Ooh. I'm not mad that it was short, honestly. It was quick. But if this was what you were going to do, you might have been just better off putting it on the damn pre-show. Um, got it out of the way quickly, I guess, and we needed to cut some time here because you certainly are going to take a lot of time next up with Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. Pat McAfee is a badass, and especially the fact that he doesn't wrestle all the time. The
the fact that he comes out and wrestles every once in a blue moon actually increases the attraction. It increases the appeal because it's a special thing. You don't see it much, but when he does, man, fuck does he deliver. He and Austin Theory went out there and had a pretty solid match that the crowd was absolutely on fire for. They absolutely were on fire. And Pat McAfee beat Austin Theory, which was kind of a surprise to me, but a pleasant surprise nonetheless. And then it's amazing. All that talk about Vince McMahon and whether he was actually going to have a match at WrestleMania, I guess he saw Stone Cold on night one and said, That's such good shit, pal. I can do it, too. Pat McAfee got two matches at WrestleMania. One of them against Austin Theory, and the other one, which will certainly, you would believe, go down as Vince McMahon's last WrestleMania match against Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, 76 whatever the hell year old Vince McMahon, decided that the guy that he wanted to have a WrestleMania match this year with was Pat McAfee. If that isn't a statement in favor of Pat McAfee, if that isn't something that talks about how what type of esteem he holds Pat McAfee, and I don't know what the hell it is. Now, Vince, obviously, 76 years old. He's not going to move around that well. You know, he's still buff for a 76 or whatever year old dude, although he's starting to, you can tell it's not quite the same gas as it used to be, but still pretty fucking ripped. He still looks more legit than the majority of the damn roster. Um, but that was what it was, and Vince McMahon wins, and I'm like, yes, that's right. It's got to be badass to walk out there in front of 77,000 people and say, I built this shit. This is me. They might as well call it McMahon mania, damn it. And then you go out there and you book yourself to win? Now that is politics that we should all be proud of, baby. But we all know what this was setting up for. You had to feel it. You had to sense it. You had Austin there. Why not incorporate him at night too? And this was fucking amazing. Never gets old watching Austin stun Vince, even when Vince fucks up selling the stunner. Like, frankly, going back to 1997, Vince didn't sell the stunner right then. He's certainly not going to in his mid-damn 70s, and that's kind of not the point here. It's actually, if anything, better, because it more stays true to the Vince McMahon character that he didn't take the fucking stunner right. And if anything, I would argue it's a little bit more believable because that's more of a natural reaction you would have if somebody kicks you in the stomach, you're like, back back up, and you kind of lose your balance a little bit. But whatever. The crowd got to see freaking Austin stun McMahon, stun Theory, stun McAfee, and the fans are happy. Like, this was fantastic. I loved it. And then we get to the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. Which it certainly wasn't. The title versus title match. Brock Lesnar versus our tribal chief. Acknowledge him. You better acknowledge him now, Roman Reigns. This was a bit underwhelming. A bit. Like, it was good. But I'm expecting, like, as many times as you've done this match now, and as many, as much as you've put behind this, it felt like it needed to be like this explosive grand finale to the WrestleMania weekend. And it just kind of wasn't. Like maybe it was cut short a little bit because of Roman's supposed shoulder injury. I don't know. Was it? Like this isn't exactly a match you needed to go half an hour. But this was a little bit lackluster and underwhelming. It was. Felt like you could have played off of the Heyman thing a little bit more. Felt like you, it just left me wanting more. And even the kind of finisher with the spear felt like it was kind of out of nowhere. And not out of nowhere in the good thing of like, hey, it caught me by surprise. Kind of out of nowhere of like, hey, this doesn't feel like a logical point to end this match. But now Roman Reigns is indeed the undisputed champion. And we figure out where we go from here. Like the visual of him holding up the two belts at the end, you know, is an incredible visual. You know, all I gotta say is, watching all of these young lions go, Rock! Rocky! WrestleMania 39, Los Angeles! Just bring it! But yeah, night two of WrestleMania was a lot of fun. I got to see God. Like that opening tag match was good. 
Montez Ford and how much air he's able to get is just incredible. As some people are talking about it on Twitter, it's kind of true. Angelo Dawkins with his Martin Luther King Jr. look. <laughs> um, the Sami Zayn, Johnny Knoxville stuff was fantastic fun. That's what sports entertainment is. Edge versus AJ Styles felt more like wrestling, and I like that. Pat McAfee, his match with Theory, the Vince McMahon stuff, the Austin stuff. Like, this was just a fun night and a fun weekend of wrestling. Like I said, how much does it mean for the long term in the company? Eh, probably not much, and it's not designed to, and frankly, anymore, I don't know if I give a fuck. But on this weekend, for a night, a couple of nights where I wasn't expecting a damn thing, they certainly, certainly over-delivered. That's for damn sure.